Ethylene glycol IUPAC name, ethane 1, 2 diol is an organic compound with the formula CH2OH2. It is mainly used for two purposes, as a raw material in the manufacture of polyester fibers and for antifreeze formulations. It is an odorless, colorless, sweet-tasting, viscous liquid. Ethylene glycol is highly toxic. Household pets are especially susceptible to ethylene glycol poisoning from vehicle antifreeze leaks. Production Industrial roots Ethylene glycol is produced from ethylene ethene, via the intermediate ethylene oxide. Ethylene oxide reacts with water to produce ethylene glycol according to the chemical equation C2H4O plus H2O HO minus CH2CH2-O This reaction can be catalyzed by either acids or bases, or can occur at neutral pH under elevated temperatures. The highest yields of ethylene glycol occur at acidic or neutral pH with a large excess of water. Under these conditions, ethylene glycol yields of 90% can be achieved. The major byproducts are the oligomers diethylene glycol, triethylene glycol, and tetraethylene glycol. The separation of these oligomers and water is energy intensive. About 6.7 million tons are produced annually. A higher selectivity is achieved by use of Shell's omega process. In the omega process, the ethylene oxide is first converted with carbon dioxide, CO2, to ethylene carbonate. This ring is then hydrolyzed with a base catalyst in a second step to produce monoethylene glycol in 98% selectivity. The carbon dioxide is released in this step again and can be fed back into the process circuit. The carbon dioxide comes in part from the ethylene oxide production, where a part of the ethylene is completely oxidized. Ethylene glycol is produced from carbon monoxide in countries with large coal reserves and less stringent environmental regulations. The oxidative carbonylation of methanol to dimethyl oxalate provides a promising approach to the production of C1-based ethylene glycol. Dimethyl oxalate can be converted into ethylene glycol in high yields, 94.7%, by hydrogenation with a copper catalyst. Methanol is recycled. Therefore, only carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and oxygen are consumed. One plant with a production capacity of 200,000 tons ethylene glycol per year is in Inner Mongolia, a second plant with a capacity of 250,000 tons per year was scheduled for 2012 in Henan. As of 2015, four plants in China with a capacity of 200,000 t, a each were operating with at least 17 more to follow. Biological roots the caterpillar of the greater wax moth, Galleria melanella, has gut bacteria with the ability to degrade polyethylene PE, into ethylene glycol. Historical roots According to most sources, French chemist Charles Adolphe Wurtz (1817–1884) first prepared ethylene glycol in 1856. He first treated ethylene iodide. C2H4I2 with silver acetate and then hydrolyzed the resultant ethylene diacetate with potassium hydroxide. Wurtz named his new compound glycol because it shared qualities with both ethyl alcohol with one hydroxyl group and glycerin with three hydroxyl groups. In 1859, Wurtz prepared ethylene glycol via the hydration of ethylene oxide. There appears to have been no commercial manufacture or application of ethylene glycol prior to World War I, when it was synthesized from ethylene dichloride in Germany and used as a substitute for glycerol in the explosives industry. In the United States, semi-commercial production of ethylene glycol via ethylene chlorohydrin started in 1917. The first large-scale commercial glycol plant was erected in 1925 at South Charleston, West Virginia, by Carbide and Carbon Chemicals Co., now Union Carbide Corp. By 1929, ethylene glycol was being used by almost all dynamite manufacturers. In 1937, Carbide started up the first plant based on Leffert's process for vapor phase oxidation of ethylene to ethylene oxide. Carbide maintained a monopoly on the direct oxidation process until 1953, when the scientific design process was commercialized and offered for licenses. Uses 
Ethylene glycol is primarily used in antifreeze formulations 50% and as a raw material in the manufacture of polyesters such as polyethylene terephthalate PET 40%. Coolant and heat transfer agent the major use of ethylene glycol is as a medium for convective heat transfer in, for example, automobiles and liquid-cooled computers. Ethylene glycol is also commonly used in chilled water air conditioning systems that place either the chiller or air handlers outside, or systems that must cool below the freezing temperature of water. In geothermal heating, cooling systems, ethylene glycol is the fluid that transports heat through the use of a geothermal heat pump. The ethylene glycol either gains energy from the source lake, ocean, water well, or dissipates heat to the sink, depending on whether the system is being used for heating or cooling. Pure ethylene glycol has a specific heat capacity about one-half that of water. So, while providing freeze protection and an increased boiling point, ethylene glycol lowers the specific heat capacity of water mixtures relative to pure water. A 1 to 1 mix by mass has a specific heat capacity of about 3140 J kilogram degree C 0.75 BTU LB degree F 3 quarters that of pure water thus requiring increased flow rates in same system comparisons with water The formation of large bubbles in cooling passages of internal combustion engines will seriously inhibit heat flow flux from that area thus allowing nucleation tiny bubbles heat transfer to occur is not advisable Large bubbles in cooling passages will be self-sustaining or grow larger, with virtually the complete loss of cooling in that spot. With pure MEG that hot spot has to get to 200 degrees Celsius 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Cooling due to other effects such as air draft from fan etc. not considered in pure nucleation analysis will assist in preventing large bubble formation. Antifreeze Pure ethylene glycol freezes at about minus 12 degrees Celsius 10.4 degrees Fahrenheit, but, when mixed with water, the mixture freezes at a lower temperature. For example, a mixture of 60% ethylene glycol and 40% water freezes at minus 45 degrees Celsius minus 49 degrees Fahrenheit. Diethylene glycol behaves similarly. The freezing point depression of some mixtures can be explained as a colligative property of solutions but, in highly concentrated mixtures such as the example, deviations from ideal solution behavior are expected due to the influence of intermolecular forces. Because of the depressed freezing temperatures, ethylene glycol is used as a de-icing fluid for windshields and aircraft, as an antifreeze in automobile engines, and as a component of vitrification anti -crystallization, mixtures for low temperature preservation of biological tissues and organs. Mixture of ethylene glycol and water can also be chemically termed as glycol concentrate, compound, mixture, solution. The use of ethylene glycol not only depresses the freezing point of aqueous mixtures, but also elevates their boiling point. This results in the operating temperature range for heat transfer fluids being broadened on both ends of the temperature scale. The increase in boiling temperature is due to pure ethylene glycol having a much higher boiling point and lower vapor pressure than pure water, as is typical with most binary mixtures of volatile liquids. Precursor to polymers In the plastic industry, ethylene glycol is an important precursor to polyester fibers and resins. Polyethylene terephthalate, used to make plastic bottles for soft drinks, is prepared from ethylene glycol. Other uses Dehydrating agent Ethylene glycol is used in the natural gas industry to remove water vapor from natural gas before further processing, in much the same manner as triethylene glycol TEG. Hydrate inhibition Because of its high boiling point and affinity for water, ethylene glycol is a useful desiccant. Ethylene glycol is widely used to inhibit the formation of natural gas clathrates hydrates in long multiphase pipelines that convey natural gas from remote gas fields to a gas processing facility. Ethylene glycol can be recovered from the natural gas and reused as an inhibitor after purification treatment that removes water and inorganic salts. Natural gas is dehydrated by ethylene glycol. 
In this application, ethylene glycol flows down from the top of a tower and meets a rising mixture of water vapor and hydrocarbon gases. Dry gas exits from the top of the tower. The glycol and water are separated, and the glycol recycled. Instead of removing water, ethylene glycol can also be used to depress the temperature at which hydrates are formed. The purity of glycol used for hydrate suppression, monoethylene glycol, is typically around 80%, whereas the purity of glycol used for dehydration, triethylene glycol, is typically 95 to more than 99%. Moreover, the injection rate for hydrate suppression is much lower than the circulation rate in a glycol dehydration tower. Niche applications Minor uses of ethylene glycol include the manufacture of capacitors, as a chemical intermediate in the manufacture of 1,4-dioxane, as an additive to prevent corrosion in liquid cooling systems for personal computers, and inside the lens devices of cathode ray tube type of rear projection televisions. Ethylene glycol is also used in the manufacture of some vaccines, but it is not itself present in these injections. It is used as a minor, 1-2% ingredient in shoe polish and also in some inks and dyes. Ethylene glycol has seen some use as a rod and fungal treatment for wood, both as a preventative and a treatment after the fact. It has been used in a few cases to treat partially rotted wooden objects to be displayed in museums. It is one of only a few treatments that are successful in dealing with rot in wooden boats, and is relatively cheap. Ethylene glycol may also be one of the minor ingredients in screen cleaning solutions, along with the main ingredient isopropyl alcohol. Ethylene glycol is commonly used as a preservative for biological specimens, especially in secondary schools during dissection as a safer alternative to formaldehyde. It is also used as part of the water-based hydraulic fluid used to control subsea oil and gas production equipment. Ethylene glycol is used as a protecting group in organic synthesis to protect carbonyl compounds such as ketones and aldehydes. Silicon dioxide reacts in heated reflux under dinitrogen with ethylene glycol and an alkali metal base to produce highly reactive pentacoordinate silicates which provide access to a wide variety of new silicon compounds. The silicates are essentially insoluble in all polar solvent except methanol. Chemical reactions Ethylene glycol is used as a protecting group for carbonyl groups in organic synthesis. Treating a ketone or aldehyde with ethylene glycol in the presence of an acid catalyst e.g., p-toluene sulfonic acid, BF3 at 2O, gives the corresponding a 1,3-dioxylene, which is resistant to bases and other nucleophiles. The 1,3-dioxylene protecting group can thereafter be removed by further acid hydrolysis. In this example, isofer one was protected using ethylene glycol with p-toluene sulfonic acid in moderate yield. Water was removed by azeotropic distillation to shift the equilibrium to the right. Toxicity Ethylene glycol is highly toxic, with an oral LDLO equals 786 mg per kilogram for humans. The major danger is due to its sweet taste, which can attract children and animals. Upon ingestion, ethylene glycol is oxidized to glycolic acid, which is, in turn, oxidized to oxalic acid, which is toxic. It and its toxic byproducts first affect the central nervous system, then the heart, and finally the kidneys. Ingestion of sufficient amounts is fatal if untreated. Several deaths are recorded annually in the U.S. alone. Antifreeze products for automotive use containing propylene glycol in place of ethylene glycol are available. They are generally considered safer to use, as propylene glycol does not taste as good and is converted in the body to lactic acid, a normal product of metabolism and exercise. Australia, the UK, and 17 U.S. states, as of 2012, require the addition of a bitter flavoring, denationium benzoate, to antifreeze. In December 2012, U.S. antifreeze manufacturers agreed voluntarily to add a bitter flavoring to all antifreeze that is sold in the consumer market of the U.S. In the environment Ethylene glycol is a high production volume chemical, it breaks down in air in about 10 days and in water or soil in a few weeks. It enters the environment through the dispersal of ethylene glycol containing products, especially at airports, where it is used in de-icing agents for runways and aeroplanes. 
while prolonged low doses of ethylene glycol show no toxicity, at near lethal doses 1,000 mg per kilogram per day, ethylene glycol acts as a teratogen. Based on a rather extensive database, it induces skeletal variations and malformations in rats and mice by all routes of exposure. This molecule has been observed in outer space. Notes References External links Webhook page for C2H602 ATSDR case studies in environmental medicine, ethylene glycol and propylene glycol toxicity CDC, NIOSH pocket guide to chemical hazards Medical information Herring Yu, Yujin Zhao, Xinbin Ma, Jinlong Gong 2012. Ethylene Glycol, Properties, Synthesis, and Applications. Chemical Society Reviews. 41, 11, 4218, 4244. Bibcode, 2012 CHSRV, 641 6507P. DOI, 10.1039.C2CS15359A. PMID 22488259. PMID 22488259.